Hi there, let's get to it. Today we're looking at the next palette following the curves, the qualifier. It operates on much of the same principles as the curves palette, in the sense that you can target a specific hue, level of saturation, or luminance to isolate a portion of the image and make changes to it. The difference is that the changes will not be made within the palette itself. This qualifier palette is reserved for isolating areas of an image, so you can then go on and start working on them using the other palettes, like the color wheels and the curves. So I'll go into Node and say Add Serial Node. From now on, we're going to stick to using the shortcut Alt-S. Just like the curves palette, we have a few different controls at the top, and it's essentially the four different ways that you're able to use the qualifier based on the hue, saturation, and luminance of your image, the red, green, blue channels, just the luminance, or the new DaVinci Resolve 12 option, which is a 3D qualifier. We'll start off with the classic HSL and look at the 3D afterwards. I'm going to hide my timeline and my clips because they're not too vital for this workflow. And I'm also going to shut the gallery down, and that way I have a much better preview of my viewer. To select the color range of my image, I can either click to make my initial selection, or I can click and drag to grab a variety of values. Right now we're not in highlight mode, which means I can't see my selection unless I look at the node. So in the top left corner where we have our image wipe and split screen controls, we also have the highlight control, and this allows us to isolate our selection. You can see that on either side of the image I have these gray bars, which shows me that these areas have not been included in the selection, and they probably should be. So I can go down here to my selection range tool and click on the selector with a plus sign to add more of the colors. You don't have to select your image based on all three values. You could, for example, decide that you don't want saturation to be a factor influencing your selection. And in some cases, that could result in a cleaner key, like in this case. So I've got some areas that are becoming cleaner in the back. Uh, you're also able to control the center of your selection. You can control the width, so you can see the selection on the color bar expanding. The soft controls allow you to taper off uh, the ends of the selection so that they're semi-opacity as they reach the edges of their limits. And lastly, you have symmetry, which controls whether the edges taper off together or if one of them is less vital than the other. And in this case, uh, if I taper off the pink better, I do tend to get a better blend between the bottom of the sky and the buildings. Uh, so then, much the same controls for the saturation and luminance. The feather tools next to the selection range work just like the qualifier tools, except they operate on a semi-opacity basis. So if you're picking a color and it's slowly tapering off to something else, like a shadow on a wall or a gradient or a reflection, you can use the feather tool to add or remove a portion of the selection without making it entirely transparent or full opacity. The last tool is the Invert tool, which allows you to very quickly switch your selection in case your original intention was to grade the opposite of what you were selecting. The matte finesse controls are also incredibly important. Whereas the hue, saturation, and luminance bars were targeting the colors of the image, the matte finesse will target the black and white values of the matte. Uh, so if you've ever worked with keying before, this should be familiar to you. You have tools like Black Clip, which allow you to introduce black into areas that are dark gray. Or you have White Clip that allow you to brighten up areas that are almost white. The Clean Black allows you to fill in small gaps. So in this case, I'm able to remove some of the dots I have on the buildings. And the Clean White does the opposite. It might also be a good idea to blur the matte slightly so that when you start making changes in the colors, they're not super pixelated or sharp and dramatic. The in and out ratio can be thought of as an expand and contract tool. So if I have a bit of a, a halo around my selection, then I can choose to expand outwards and remove that halo. And that's it. When you're happy with your highlight, you can now go into your curves or your color wheels and start making the appropriate changes. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.